final year projects are usually um, chosen by the faculty members. So um, the faculty members usually try and find a real world problem that they want the students to solve. And so each faculty member develops the project and the students have an option to choose which project most intrigues them. Now the project is a year long course. It's a six credit course. And um, the final year waiting on their GPA is pretty heavy. It's actually 30% of their total GPA. So if they do well on the project and the project is impactful, then um, that would prepare them in terms of being able to go out and make a con contribution to the world. So we have, uh, for example, we have one of the projects was a low cost patient monitor monitoring system. How it works is a nurse or a doctor can enter, safe threshold for the patient, heart rate, blood pressure, temperature, and then it goes by the so if at any point in time the vital drops below the minimum or above the maximum, the nurse will alert via email. So my final year project is the mobile decompass application and NFC reader. And it's a contactless system that enables someone to have their own card in order to access the facilities or access a campus for um, building. Uh, NFC, which is near field communication, is it's a contest, contactless mo mode of operation. And I thought that this project would be exciting to do because you can use a cell phone, you can use cards that are issued for you, and it's just the direction that we would love to go in because the the system that we, we try to implement is all electronics, all chat contact this. The students and the faculty feel that we need to get these projects out there more quickly so that we can help solve the problems that are happening with COVID-19. So for example, one of the things that the faculty did was to step up and, and, and start repairing ventilators. Um, we're in partnership with Monotech. We're doing those uh, repairs. Some of our students are working on those ventilators. Some of our students and past students have actually worked on protective, uh, personal protective equipment. You may have heard about the face shields that have been produced with 3D printers. And they're also working on um, a ventilator, a low cost ventilator that could be used to help supplement what we have already in the island. We have uh, been working assiduously and very closely with the, with the faculty's administration in one, getting the word out about any updates that needs to be, that needs to be sent out to our students, as well as the, the overall support that students have. We know that the pandemic um, has a real negative impact on our students and without the, the resources that's, that's needed or that's usually provided on campus, we now have to step in in order to assist our students in having the best possible experience that is the learning experience as an engineer. You know the students would be very worried about how the classes are going, how, how the grade systems are going to be set up. So what we have done is really send around lots of messages via WhatsApp you know, there's a little advisory saying what to do, what not to do, how classes are going to be held. Most importantly, we had a virtual town hall with where the dean, as well as some other members of the administration, spoke with us, a few members of the executive, and that was streamed via YouTube using Zoom. In terms of volunteering now, we have made sure that our students take the initiative. Now, as you can see before, our students have been developing projects that are related directly to the COVID crisis, as well as the volunteering of various initiatives that's also external to the UA campus. One would be the Citizen Response JA initiative, where the production of masks, that's the face shields, I should say, for our frontline workers. That's where we 3D print, we supervise the 3D printing of these shield frames as, as well as the assembly of these frames to be provided for frontline workers. The final project usually develops a prototype. Mm -hmm. um, again, the, the mandate of most of our project is to make it low cost. Mm -hmm. However, funding as usual will be a major, major um, part of being able to mass produce these solutions. So um, once the projects are complete and we realize that or we develop it to its full potential, then we'll be able to take it out there to be able to get funding that can help us mass produce it. Monotech well, Engineering Services is seen as a commercial arm of the Faculty of Engineering. We um, are engaged in a lot of engineering services, um, the biggest one including the operation and maintenance contractors to the UWI cogen plant. Uh, 
and we also do HVAC services and energy consulting services. Um, currently, we're, we just started and become very involved in biomedical repairs, and instrument repairs and maintenance. So as you look around, you see a lot of that in the lab we're in right now. Our COVID response has to do with um, assisting in, main, in repairing a lot of the broken ventilators. When you when just start getting really serious about responding to the COVID, we're told that there are only 25 ventilators in the country that's functional. And we know from past experience that there have been some broken ones sitting down in the various hospitals. So we immediately reached out to them, we reached out to the UW um, University Hospital of the West Indies, we reached out to Sarah, and the UH brought, UHW brought down eight um, of their broken ventilators, we were able to repair seven GEI event, and they're, they're in service right now, and they have been returned. One is fully broken. Um, we already repaired about four, or is it five, ventilators for between KPH and Buster Monty Hospital for Children and Victoria Jubilee Hospital and those are back in service. So we have another four waiting for parts right now.